Okay, first off, congratulations, Coach Sweeney and a very good football team. Boy, very athletic football team. Big. I don't realize how big they are to you standing down there next to them. But they, uh, boy, they do a great job over there, and congrats to them. Uh, I thought our kids played extremely hard, um, continue to fight. I think they're, uh, you know, they're a bunch of fighters in that room, right, Georgie? And the thing I love about this team is uh, we stay true to, to who we are, and that's uh, a team that will continue to play to the last whistle. And uh, disappointed in the loss, but proud of the fact the kids played extremely hard. Um, I'd like also to thank all the folks from the 10th Mountain Division up at Fort Drum who spent good time with us. Um, speaking to the team last night, uh, Captain Greg Durso had a great message for us, as well as, uh, as, well as Shane. Um, Sergeant First Class uh, uh, Shane Hankey. Uh, just great men. Seen, seen a lot of ugly things, so we could sit here and talk about a football game. And uh, love those guys. Love them to death. And uh, just uh, really appreciative of uh, what they've done with our kids. Right, Georgie? So with that being said, um, you know, obviously, difficult situation. Can't spot number one team in the country, 14 points in the first two minutes of the game. And uh, we were disappointed with that. And uh, once we washed that off ourselves, I thought our kids played extremely hard. I thought we played effective football. I thought our offense did a nice job uh, keeping Clemson guessing, uh, especially in the option game, the triple and double option game. Missed a couple deep throws that could have <clears throat> really given us a, a push there, but um, a very good job by our kids and coaches. Second half defense played extremely well. Um, good turnover ratio. By the end of the game, we ended up plus two, I believe, right? Finished at plus two. Usually when you're plus two, you find a way to win that game. Unfortunately, we came up short. Everybody's going to be back for a long time around here. Uh, uh, these kids are learning how to play football. Cordell Hudson felt terrible about giving up the first one, uh, but he played a, sensation, a sensational game after that. I think he had eight solos, uh, a TFL, um, was in the hip pocket of one of the best wide receivers in the country on some deep and double move balls. So I see great progress being made. I see good progress being made on the perimeter with our, um, our, our young corners uh, fighting to get off some big guys that are uh, big and seasoned veterans. Um, so there's a lot of good there from my point of view. Just look forward to uh, getting back, getting a game plan ready to go down to NC State and get after them. With that, any questions? Please raise your hand. We'll bring <coughs> Uh, you know, like you said, take away the first two minutes and you beat the number one team in the country. So does that make you feel better or worse? about? Well, I yeah. like the way the kids played. Um, you know, we're trying to just get better all the time, and they did get better throughout the course of the game. So a hard one to swallow because, uh, you know, we were in a position that we could play and, and beat this team. We talked about if we can get it to a seven-point game, our crowd would help us. Um, and I felt we got to that point, seven-point game in the fourth quarter. And I appreciate the fans that came out. Appreciate the fans that continue to uh, come out and support my players. Um, we've got good kids that do things right, um, so I appreciate that. Uh, just came up short, you know, unfortunately. Needed another stop there or another play there in the fourth quarter to get it done. Um, you, you know, we were close. Uh, I, like the, I like the call uh, Coach made there at the end. Uh, you know, obviously we got a flag on it. On it. They called, uh, I guess they called holding on it. Um, so... Can't comment on that, I guess. Is there any update on Jordan Fredericks, and how do you think George did in his spot? I think George is a very good football player, and he did a kick-ass job out there, George. And I'm proud of you, man. Um, George, has, George has done a good job being a team player. You know, it's it's not easy when you go into the season hoping to be the man, and, and then you have to take a backseat to a young guy a little bit. And I've been proud of the way George has handled that as a young man. Jordan will be okay. Uh, we'll check out, get a, a good check on his uh, on his injury here you know, when I, when I get away from you guys. But uh, he seemed in good spirits when I talked to him after the game. His sling on, so. Um, you know, what did you see from Zach, I guess, and, and how much did that game against LSU kind of help him, pre you know, prepare to, to face a team like Clemson? Sure, yeah. Um, I think he did a good job. You know, I felt frustrated and mad and, and also sad at the same time uh, on the one fumble early. You know, we had a triple situation. He, he dug it down in there uh, on the dive play. And... Uh, he probably stuck it in there a little too long, and then he made the right read to pull it out and, and try to hit the perimeter, and the ball came out. Um, you know, so I know that one's beating him up, beating us up, but uh, 
he did a great job, don't you guys think? I mean, uh, made some good plays with his feet, running around, uh, made some good checks. Uh, you know, I mean, for him, uh, he's living the dream just like all of us, and uh, very pleased and proud of him. He's, he's a great kid, and I'm glad he's on our football team. Anything else? <clears throat> Excuse me. Scott, do you feel snake bit at all? It seems like every time things kind of go your way, you know, the big play with Ishmael, some yeah. of the other big plays, that suddenly there's a flag or something. Yeah, well, you know, it's football. Uh, you know, there, there's been seasons where they all went my way too over the years. You know, it's been a difficult couple seasons here with, uh, you know, we played, what, seven, eight different starters at quarterback in two seasons. You know, if you'd have told me that 20 years ago when I got in coaching, if you'd have said, hey, there's going to be a couple seasons where you have to play eight different quarterbacks. Uh, I said, no, what are you talking about, you know? So, but that's life. And I think it's a great opportunity for us to teach these kids how to endure and push through difficult times. Our times aren't very difficult, you know, compared to the real world, all the stuff, you know, obviously that happened in France. And, uh, you know, it's, it's all about perspective. You know, my sister-in-law um, sent me a text before the game and she said, hey, just keep your perspective, you know, um, there's other things going on in the world. I forget how she worded it. You know, and she's a survivor of leukemia, a wonderful human being. It's important. That's why I get upset and frustrated and all those things, because it's important for us right now. But, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity to teach our kids how to get through uh, something that really isn't uh, that difficult compared to a couple of things I just mentioned. So that's what coaching's all about. That's what teaching's all about. It doesn't make it any easier. It doesn't make you feel any better when you... You know, when you wake up in the middle of the night, you know, thinking about one play here or one play there. But it's a reality that we have to deal with. <clears throat> and as men, we need to, uh, you know, just lead the way and, and teach these guys how to deal with it. Hey, Scott, on that, uh, your last drive on that fourth down, did you think about going for it there? And what ultimately was it decided for you to punt the ball? Uh, well, we, we were thinking about, we were thinking, I just, I just felt like maybe if we got a stop and, and got them right off the football field, got the ball back to our offense, we'd have a shot to go. So we want to kick the ball and Riley kicked the hell out of it, you know. Uh, we also had an opportunity to see what they were in and, and a chance to maybe do something else with it. But um, we checked out of that, punted the ball, got the field position, and then, you know, you have to play defense and get that ball back to the offense. And um, unfortunately, we didn't do that. Two more questions, Dan. Scott, just looking at right in front. I'm just sorry. looking at the uh, the almost this season, the LSU yeah. game, Clemson. Just talk about the almost and what it says about the program as a whole, and how you kind of handle it as a coach, and how you kind of try and teach these guys off of those LSU and Clemson games like today. Sure, as well as Virginia and Pitt. You know, um, you know, there's four games we talk about all the time, don't we, George? You know, it's it's a game of inches, and how can we find a way to you know to solidify two inches here, two inches there. And, uh, but we also talk about, you know, the ball isn't always going to bounce your way. And obviously this year is the best example of that. We've been in, in tight contest, but uh, we come back to controlling the controllables. We go to class, we do what's right, and, um, and we keep uh, working hard together. And the thing I'm most proud of is our kids never separate. There's as tight a team as I've been around. These guys are brothers to one another and they have each other's backs and uh you know so those are just life lessons but i think the biggest thing is perception you know perception if you win those you know three or four games you just mentioned all of a sudden you know we're way better than people thought we were supposed to be but we didn't so we came up short so hopefully uh, people can see the process moving forward because we do and we know the progress we're making last question for coach Chris? Yeah, you, you answered this um, when you had that Fourth and nine, kind of six minutes left, and you didn't get the ball back. Did you consider at all going forward? Briefly, fourth and nine. Um, yes, uh, briefly. And then, I, you know, we had timeouts on the clock. Our defense was playing better football. Uh, I thought if we could punt the ball down there, Riley hit, hit the ball really well, as you guys know. Um, maybe we can get him backed up inside the 15-yard line or something, play p field position football, go down the field, score at least a field goal, come back with a touchdown, or vice versa. There was enough time as opposed to if we go fourth and nine when the chances of fourth and nine are extremely uh, weak from a percentage point of view um, uh, at making that. And uh, then all of a sudden the, the towel would have been thrown in and, and there wouldn't have been another opportunity for us to get that, that ball. Would have given them the, them, them the ball on our side of the 50 right there 
and that would not have been a good way to end things. So wanted, I wanted to say our defense was playing pretty good football at times. And obviously, in the second half, we had some three and out um, and some short yardage stops that were big, and I had faith that we could get one. And obviously, we didn't get that done, but um, you know, that was the mindset there. Okay, thanks.